Today, we're going to talk about a page that not that many people go to, and that is going to be your project settings or project general settings. So starting up here at the top, we have data folder. What data folder is going to do is data folder is going to save audio files and other files having to do with your project into a specified folder. The cool thing about this data folder is we can click this auto button here and it'll save it to the folder that your project you're working in is actually saved to. So if you organize your projects already, then I mean, you're good to go because it'll save organized into that projects folder. Downside to this, samples that you pull in from your browser and things like that won't get saved here. The things that actually do get saved there are going to be recordings, and stuff that you pull in from your Edison audio editor, you know, things like that. Stuff that is created when you're using your project. Now, because this project isn't actually saved anywhere, it'll ask me where to put the folder, which is the same thing if we click this button. It's asking what folder are we going to save stuff to. If this project was actually saved already to a location, I could click this and no pop-ups, nothing. It would just automatically route to the folder we spoke of, the one that your project's in. You can click X to clear data folder or tell it to stop saving there, and then it would no longer save there. Next, we have time settings. So time settings is going to be your time signature. Top number of your time signature is going to be how many beats per bar. Bottom number is going to be what that beat is considered. So four would be a quarter note, eight would be an eighth note, and this will actually change the interface and the look of your project along with the metronome to actually put your project within the confines of that time signature. So by default, we're putting a four four as it is. So we can also set it as time division and to kind of show you what's going on here, Here's my channel rack. We'll set our time signature to 4-8, for example. And now you'll see 1-2 color change versus our 4-4, 1-2-3-4 color change, right? And that was because these four together, that timing is considered a quarter note. So if you do half that, we've got an eighth note. Now, the way time division is going to work is it's asking us how many steps per beat. So beats per bar is the same as our time signature. If I put five here, that's going to be five beats per bar. Steps per beat is going to go the opposite. I have to change it down to two steps in order to get that eighth note. So essentially achieving the same thing, but in a different way. Next thing we have, which actually can affect latency and processing in your project. That is going to be PPQ or pulses per quarter note. Now, what our PPQ is, is basically it is our resolution. And what I mean by that is if you pay attention really closely, this moves in increments. And I mean, it has to. There has to be a point of data in which I can set this on. That point in data is going to be your PPQ. Now, the higher the PPQ, the more processing has to be done. So lowering this can actually help with processing and can take a little bit of stress off your computer. Problem. This resolution, these data points, if you have something that is very sensitive to time, like the start point of a audio clip or a piece of automation, you know, things like that, it is going to get shifted or cut at certain points. I'm not sure exactly how they do it. They might cut to keep you synced uh, with audio clips. I'm not entirely sure. But either way, you're going to get some changes happening because stuff can't exist at those data points if those data points don't exist anymore. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're going to change the PPQ. Short, simple. 
Next thing we have is our advanced. We have play truncated notes. So basically what this means is I have this whole clip here. And if we cut it down, it's truncated. Truncated basically means it's interrupted or cut short or stopped. And it'll still play. If I come here and I turn that off, it won't play those cut short or those truncated notes anymore. Next, we have panning law. And so what panning law is, is as you move signal panned left or right to only one speaker or the other, naturally you're going to get a volume difference. Panning law, circular specifically, actually compensates for this difference. And this allows you to do the panning without having to worry about changing the volume to match your mix or where you need it to sit at. You get the consistency. Triangle or triangular will not do this compensation for you. And so you'll have to compensate for it yourself. So if you want to experiment and kind of just see, you can go to triangular and compare it to circular, but we'll leave it on circular because I don't want to compensate for it. Fast declick for cut groups. So this right here, we have our transient no bleeding. When fast declick for cut groups is on, it's not going to show it here, but what it's going to do is anything that's cutting each other via our cut group is going to be given that declicking or fading mode to, well, avoid clicking and other issues like that. If you want to learn more about that stuff, you can check my sampler settings video above where I go over all three of these pages. So this is something you can keep on if you want. Doesn't hurt to avoid clicks and pops in your songs. I like that one on the play truncated notes and clips. And we're just about set here. So quick summary, we have the data folder where we can save files for our project. This doesn't save everything though. We've got time settings, which either does a time signature or time division, as well as time-based PPQ, which is pulses per quarter note and is basically the resolution of the data points for our project. And we have an advanced section that has some cool options like, like do we play the notes or not? Do we auto compensate volume when panning or not? And do we de-click cut groups or not? I hope this video was helpful. And that's just about it. If you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio. Adios.